All right, everybody, how's it going? It is Tuesday, October 11, 2022, and of course, we just finished with week five of the NFL, so now it's, a, you know, it's time for week six of the NFL Pick'em series we do. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you, uh, you had a good week five. We did all right. We went 10 and six. It was our first week actually going up, uh, you know, 10 wins or better, so that was good. Starting to feel things a little better, starting to see things a little bit more clearly, getting a little luckier on the one-score games, kind of, because we know what the teams are a little bit. Had a few bad games, but, you know, we'll, you know it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, we have a few bye weeks actually, uh, teams that are bye this week. So finally the bye weeks have returned. So the Lions, Texans, Raiders, and Titans, uh, you know, if your team's one of these teams, enjoy some football, enjoy a week off, uh, watch one of your hated teams lose, watch your second team win, you know, however you want to do things. So, uh, you know, Lions, Texans, Raiders, and Titans, you got a bye week. Um, overall, pick them wise, I forgot to give that record. We're 38, 41, and one. So we're just three games under 500. We need another solid like 10 plus win week, even a nine win week will get us just to one under so hopefully the 10 happens and that way we're sitting pretty good uh heading into uh you know as things continue to progress so all right let's uh head into the picks but if you can uh sorry to interrupt this but make sure you like leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new around here it helps the channel grow uh helps the video do better you know and it's free and it's really helpful also i forget to mention this make sure you leave your picks down below i really like to comment back with people i like to see how your picks are i like to see where you disagree with me i like to like go head to head with anyone who's watching and like say who, who does who picks better you know it's always kind of a fun thing to do it's just a you know good way to interact with everybody and you know i i comment back on anything you could even say hey man all your picks suck and you're bad at this and you should stop doing this and i'll be like all right that's fair and then you know maybe you'll become a fan who knows or at least a listener anyway um but anyway let's uh hop into the picks you know all that youtube stuff's out of the way we won't talk about it again um you know it actually does help earlier in the video i guess whatever uh thursday night football we got a real fun one uh last week we had a barn burner that was a 12 to 9 game between the colts and the broncos this week oh boy we got an even better one it's the washington commanders taking on the chicago bears the bears are a one point favorites with an over under a 37 and a half all the lines are from FanDuel. i include them for people who like to see who the favorites are people who might bet or like to like you know formulate things around lines i put the lines in after i make my picks so that way there's no real bearing on that so it, you know if i pick a bunch of favorites it's just how i feel for the week um there's a lot of away teams winning for me this week i'm a little nervous about that one all right anyway so we have the bears taking on the commanders uh the uh the bear the commanders lost to the titans bears uh, lost to the vikings two and three versus one and four the way i'm looking at i'm gonna kind of be quick with some of these like not so fun matchups um the bears have looked good against like halfway decent teams and the commanders have looked kind of lost they're kind of like struggling to come back on teams that have just I don't I don't know like they could have beat the Titans if they'd have played slightly better it's just like I don't know it's and with the Bears it's like yeah they're not playing good but like they're staying in games with like the Vikings the Packers two pretty decent teams this year um, I've just been more impressed by what I've seen out of the Bears their defense isn't half bad uh, and that could really mess up the commanders and their offense has moments where it looks you know somewhat okay so i guess give me the bears over the commanders in a game that is going to be really boring uh anyway let's go into the games that actually have some fun uh we have the san francisco 49ers taking on the atlanta falcons oh this is a fun one uh the 49ers are five and a half point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half uh the 49ers have looked good lately they beat the panthers uh 37 to 15 which led to matt rule getting fired uh atlanta falcons um you know uh, kind of had a bad call against them in their game against the buccaneers who knows how that could have gone they could have maybe taken a lead or at least tied it um you never know that was a pretty bad call um but one of the things I'm wondering about is against this 49ers defense that seems to have woken up and kind of come to life. I wonder if the Falcons offense is going to have enough to get going without Cordero Patterson uh, with Mariota. The offensive line isn't the greatest. So when I look at this game, I'm like, I think the 49ers defense is going to be like the X factor in this one. And uh, I don't know if the Falcons have the offensive ability to deal with what the uh, 49ers can bring defensively. So give me the 49ers in that one primarily off defense. Uh, here's a game that I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me on. But that's quite all right. It's the New England Patriots taking on the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are three-point favorites with an over-under of 42.5. Uh, the Patriots are coming off a rather impressive shutout win over the Lions, 29-0. And the Browns had a really close game where they almost came, like almost had a game-winning field goal, but it missed at the last second, giving the Chargers a 30-28 to win. So regarding this game, I look at like, all right, so the Browns probably have a better football team right now, but the biggest issue I look at is the Jacoby Brissett thing. 
And I look I look at that as like, all right, so the Patriots are probably going to be able to deal with Jacoby Brissett to some extent, mainly because they did draft the guy and develop him for a few years. So they know pretty well about Jacoby Brissett's tendencies, his idiosyncrasies as a quarterback, the way he kind of approaches the game, what he might be doing or thinking. So he, they kind of have an inside track on how Jacoby might function as a quarterback. I think that's a major advantage. Um, we don't know if Bailey Zappi or Mac is going to be playing in this game. And again, with Bailey Zappi, you're not really sure what you're getting um it's kind of like this like well he looked you know you have some tape but not a lot um and also i'm wondering how the browns are going to deal with the run game they've they have miles garrett back but he didn't really do much against the chargers and eckler had a big game i'm wondering if the patriots will be able to use stevenson in their in their stable of running backs to a you know, great effect against the browns uh to kind of keep their offense off the field and kind of just you know do what they did against the Lions and kind of just win this game based on defense and run ability and special teams play. That's why I have the Patriots winning. I think special teams wise and defense, they will be able to do just enough to up, upset the Browns and keep them kind of off pace. And in terms of the Patriots on offense, they will probably be able to do enough to get enough field goals and maybe a touchdown or two to uh, steal a game against the Browns. Uh, if they had Watson, I'd be picking the Browns. And if Miles Garrett was at full health, I'd probably be picking the Browns also. But Right now, I'm not really certain about the Browns' defense, uh, health-wise. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. It's the New York Jets taking on the Green Bay Packers. It's kind of my upset of the week, too, the Patriots, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, this one, uh, we have the Packers and the Jets. Packers are seven-point favorites, which I think is a little too high with the way the Jets have been playing, with an over-under of 46-and-a-half. The Jets are coming off a very impressive 40-17 to win versus the Dolphins, albeit against, like, the Brown, uh, the Jets, like, third st- or the uh, Dolphins' third-string quarterback, uh, Skylar, uh, Skylar Thompson or something like that, had to come in because uh, Teddy Bridgewater went down with a head injury, concussion. And uh, the Packers had a very weird game where they lost to the Giants, where they just, like, stopped playing football in the second half. I don't really know what happened, but... Uh, Packers fans, I, I'm not really certain as to what happened to your team in that one. But I still have you guys. Okay, so you're at home. You're going to be upset after a bad loss. I can't imagine you guys losing to the Jets in this one. Um, this could be a really big game for the Jets if they somehow play really good in this game and just lose. Or if they were able to somehow get the upset win. Then this could be a very big statement for this Jets team. And be like, hey, look at our defense and look at what our offense can do just enough to win these games. So this is a big game for the Jets. They have a lot to prove. But right now I'm still leaning on the Packers because I have a feeling Rodgers and company get their revenge on what was a pretty ugly game for them. Uh, oh boy, uh, this is a game I actually waffled on a couple times because I wasn't too certain as to how I would pick this game. Uh, the Jaguars take on the Colts in Indianapolis. The Colts are two and a half point favorites with an over under of 41 and a half. Both these, uh, no, the, te- uh, the Texans lost to, uh, the Jaguars lost to the Texans 13 to 6. Pretty typical game. The Texans typically beat the Jaguars. And then we have the Colts who won 12 to 9 against the Broncos. Um, one of the things that the reason the Colts are struggling so hard is their offensive line and Matt Ryan. Um, like Matt Ryan needs more time than the offensive line can get him. And when you play a team like the Jaguars who are built around like pass rush and upset like disrupting timing with the quarterback and getting after the quarterback you run into a problem with a team like the Colts then right you can see why maybe the Colts were shut out by the Jaguars 24 nothing earlier in the season because bad offensive line lack of uh, playmakers for Matt Ryan to get the ball quickly to they need a little time downfield to get open uh, the running back situation is not improved for the Colts so in this game I have to go I wanted to pick the Colts at home but like I like kept thinking about it. I'm like man there's no way the, the bad offensive line, the, the Jaguars are just going to feast again like they did in the first game. The Colts may be able to keep it closer because they're at home and they'll have the home crowd to feed off of. But unless Matt Ryan can suddenly run or the offensive line can block a lot better. Oh boy, this is going to be a this is going to be another game where the Jaguars uh, get a nice little W against the Colts. Give me the Jaguars and I guess in an upset, but I think a lot of people are going to be picking the Jaguars. So it doesn't feel like an upset. Uh, this game kind of has an asterisk asterisk however you say that word i don't it's like a weird word i don't really know how to properly say it i know how to spell it but i don't know how to say it it's a weird word anyway the minnesota vikings take on the miami dolphins uh the vikings are three point favorites with an over under a 40 uh five and a half right now i'm leaning on taking the vikings again one o'clock game uh against a pretty good team so that kind of muddies up the primetime kirk at one o'clock but with the dolphins i look to the situation of 
we don't i don't think teddy bridgewater is going to be available we have no idea if two is going to be able to play yet this week i'm pretty sure he's not and then um so we're down to skylar thompson and and the way he played against the jets i can't really like f like pick the dolphins to win this game um if they were to win with like skylar at quarterback and he has a full week of preparation maybe he can do a little bit better but again I mean, that wasn't a good performance. I mean, they they looked bad against the um, against the Jets of all teams, a team they've done very good against recently. They just had no way to stop them. Um, it seems like they really do need Tua at quarterback. Like, however this works, they need Tua or Teddy, and uh, I don't think either of them are available now. If this changes between now and like Sunday, I can go back and reevaluate this pick on Saturday because we do a separate stream uh, stream on Saturday where we go over all the picks we made today and make sure we're solid. We haven't changed any picks this year. We've kind of stayed pat that we've decided so far but this is a game i want to review once i know more about what the dolphins quarterback situation is because right now i don't know i don't think anyone really fully knows so uh right now i have the vikings winning but that's if skylar thompson plays and that's kind of how it looks just basically because the dolphins looked dead when he was at quarterback i don't know i was like oh this is bad Anyway, uh, this is a decent game that, you know, this should be all right. The Cincinnati Bengals take on the New Orleans Saints. Bengals are one and a half point, uh, one and a half point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half. Um, I'm going to go with the Bengals in this one. I know that the Saints won against the Seahawks 39 to 32. But then again, it's like the Seahawks are pretty bad defensively. They let the Lions put up a bunch of points. The Seahawks are basically getting into shootouts every single game this year, it looks like, because they have a good offense, bad defense. So kind of like the Lions, they just can score a lot, but they can't stop you from scoring. So I don't think you can really take what a team does against the Seahawks and be like, this is what they are. Um, when when I seen what the Bengals defense was able to do to the Ravens, kind of shut them down, hold them to just, um, what, like 19 points combined with the special teams and uh, almost win a game. You know, they, they looked really good on defense. And I don't know if the Saints are going to be ready for that uh, offensive line. Questionable. Um, Andy Dalton, if that's going to be their quarterback, is going to be, you know, pretty well beat up. Um, and then if they go, I, I, again, it's just you just the Seahawks defense is so bad. It's hard to be like, look at how good the Saints offense is. It's like, yeah, what about the other games where they've looked absolutely terrible? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. So give me the Bengals in that one. You know, uh, here's another one where I think a lot of people are going to be picking the Giants. But if you're a Giants fan, just know that every time I picked against your team, you won. I've only picked your team once. Coincidence? I don't know. Uh, Ravens take on the Giants. Ravens are five point favorites with an over under of 44 and a half. There's two ways to look at this game, in my opinion. You can look at it as the... Wink Martindale knows the offense, so the Ravens are going to get clamped up, which is one way to look at it, and I certainly agree that's, a, that's probably going to happen. But you can also look at the alternative. The Ravens used to have Wink Martindale as a defensive coordinator, so they know him very, very well as well. They know him just as well as he knows their offense. And like, so the Giants are running his defense probably with very little variation. So when the Ravens go to a game plan, they already know exactly what the defensive scheming is going to look like, what the plans are, what it looks like, what it's going to sound like, what Wink's going to probably try to do against Lamar and company. So they have a good idea of how Wink Martindale operates. And that's kind of why I'm leaning on the Ravens. Plus, I trust their offense a little bit more than the Giants. If the Giants were better on offense, I'd go with the Giants in this one. But right now, with the way that I think the Ravens are going to be able to scheme against Wink Martindale knowing him, they'll probably be able to work past it just a little bit with the skill of their offense. Whereas the Giants, I think they'll be able to hang in this game and keep it very close because their defense and their offense has been all right running it. I think they'll come up just a bit short because of the offensive woes. So give me the Ravens in a really close, good game. Um, who gives a shit about this game? Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bucks are seven point favorites with an seven and a half point favorites with an over under of forty three and a half. Don't really have too much to add to this. Um, the Bucks should have that game against the Falcons was a little weird. I forgot to put that the Steelers played the Bills. The Steelers played the Bills and lost thirty eight to three. They're they're pretty lost right now. Give me the Buccaneers over the Steelers. It'd be quite the upset if the uh, Steelers were able to win. Say goodbye to your always having five hundred record there, Tomlin. All right, four o'clock games coming up. Carolina Panthers take on the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are ten and a half point favorites with an over under of forty and a half. The Rams haven't looked great this season, but neither have the Panthers, and they have a new head coach, a new everything, new coordinator um the team's kind of in shambles baker's playing with a boot on we don't know what the quarterback situation is everything's kind of ugly right now in carolina so it's really hard to pick them against a team that's actually pretty well coached has pretty good defense should be playing better on offense but the cowboys are a juggernaut on defense so it's kind of you know that kind of sucks to run into them but 
I don't know. It, it's it's always fun to pick a team with a new coach because they win a lot, but I just I don't think the Panthers are very well put together. Matt Rule really messed that team up, so I'll take the Rams. Um, here's a game that'll have absolutely no defense, but so it comes down to like what team do you actually trust to make a singular defensive stop? Um, it's the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Cardinals are favored by two and a half with an over under a 51 and a half. Get, go ahead and give me the Cardinals in this one in a game that's going to be very offensive focused. And so like you can trust both offenses to put up points, but it's like, all right, what defense do you trust to be able to make like one stop in the game? And I kind of go on uh, the Cardinals defense. It's it's a little bit better. It will probably a lot better than the Seahawks defense. So if it's a shootout, you have to kind of look at, all right, both offenses are very capable of scoring. Uh, um, especially against the Seahawks defense and you have to then go look at what team do you trust to make a stop I guess I'll go with the Seahawks I know they won earlier in the year so I guess I'll go with the split as well I don't know <laughs> again yeah. here's probably the best game of the weekend um, that's going to have the most varied opinion on it it's the Buffalo Bills taking on the Kansas City Chiefs the Bills are three point favorites with an over under of 53 and a half and this is going to be a game the Bills are going to want revenge in very, very badly. Both teams are coming off pretty solid wins. The Chiefs kind of had a questionable win last night with officiating and everything like that, but they got the win nonetheless. So we have two 4-1 and one teams, two teams that a lot of people have playing in the AFC Championship game against one another, um, should the seeding allow that to happen. And uh, yeah, so again, you could always look to a, a, a lots of things with this matchup. You can look to the Bills being playing really good defense. You can look to the Chiefs also playing halfway decent defense this year, but also their offense seems to be just as capable as it always has been without Hill. Uh, Kelsey's playing out of his mind. And then it's just, it's, I don't, this game was so hard to pick, man. You could go either way. It's like, like whatever line of logic you use, and be used also like to say the other team's gonna because like if you point to the bills injuries then bills fans could be like yeah but we're still like really good on defense we're like nobody's doing anything against us and it's like yeah they've given up like no points to the dolphins ravens and it's like wow that's actually kind of impressive the fact that they've been without all these good defenders and they're still playing good defense you know what i mean but then it's like well they're now they're playing against mahomes and a bunch of young defenders and a bunch of guys who might get their shit uh kind of like tricked up but again, Von, it, it's so complicated to like try to figure this game out. Um, I'm just going to go with the Chiefs uh, and uh, we'll see how it plays. <laughs> again, I, I don't have the best logic for this one. My mind is like, I think the Chiefs might just have the Bills number. I like Andy Reid as a coach more. I think the Chiefs are... Uh, they're like the same on offense i don't know the chiefs have just been more impressive consistently this year like buffalo's had a couple games there where if like miami didn't shit the bed i think they lost to miami actually they did if if, if they didn't shit the bed against the uh ravens like if the ravens just didn't stop they probably would have lost badly so i don't know I, like there's been moments where buffalo's kind of been like a what's going on with buffalo this year but whereas with the chiefs it's been like yeah the once they got over the no hill thing they seemed pretty well put together and ready to go i don't know that's gonna be a hard one plus it's a home game so i'm kind of giving the home team a couple points and that's kind of how i'm feeling uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys, this is going to be a very defensive football game for Sunday Night Football. Cowboys versus Eagles. The Eagles are five and a half point favorites. Um, if the Cowboys win this game, I wouldn't be shocked at all. So I look at this like this, right? I don't think there's going to be a lot of offense in this game because you have a very good D Dallas defense, probably the best defense in football right now is the Cowboys. Um, and it's not really even like low key. It's like very like, yeah, it's probably the Cowboys. Um, and then it's like, then you look at the Eagles who have been playing very good defense outside of that Lions game all season long. So you have two good defenses, um, one very high key, good defense. And then the Eagles have a pretty low key, good defense. So with the Cowboys, you're coming in with a offense that's already pretty limited that has trouble scoring as it is because of the backup quarterback situation so no Dak and uh Cooper Rush again I'm thinking the Cowboys offense is going to struggle mightily against this Eagles uh defense that has been very kind of quiet about it whereas with the Eagles I know that they're going to struggle against the Cowboys defense but I do think that maybe the Eagles defense creates a scoring opportunity like and actually scores like on defense that could happen on like a pick six or a scoop and score and like with the um with their offense I think they could do just enough to maybe eep out a touchdown and kick some field goals where it's like 
I trust both defenses tremendously in this game, so I have to go look at their offenses. And right now, I'm kind of like, I like the Eagles' offense a lot more than I like the Cowboys' offense, and I trust them to make make a singular couple plays to win this game. It could even be like a 13-10 type game where it's like both teams get a touchdown and then one team hits a field goal or two, and that's the major difference. Like it's like that's what it feels like the difference in this game is going to come down to is like a field goal or two difference. So. Uh, give me the Eagles in this one mainly because I trust their offense a lot more than the Cowboys offense. Great defenses, though. That's going to be a hell of a game. Uh, the Denver Broncos take on the Los Angeles Chargers. Another primetime Broncos game for some reason. The Chargers are four and a half point favorites with an over under of 45 and a half. Give me the Chargers. The Broncos can't score points. I don't know what's going on with them. Like they just seem to be like, kind of like their defense has been pretty like really good. So they'll probably keep them in this game annoyingly like with like like defensive scoring. But like their offense can't score touchdowns. So if you can't score touchdowns, you probably won't be able to beat a team like the Chargers. So give me the Chargers. Uh, again, here's my picks records for the year again. I finally went 10 and 6, finally double digits. Uh 38 41 and 1, which ain't the best, but it ain't terrible. But yeah, that's about it for this week. A little bit shorter of a video with a few uh teams not playing uh this week, you know. Uh as, you know, I'm trying to get the videos a little bit tighter, so that's about it. Uh week 6 down the drain, so let's hopefully see how we do this week. Hopefully these are all good picks. Uh we'll revisit a few games on Saturday, specifically the Dolphins Vikings and maybe the Cowboys Eagles if Dak is activated and ready to play this week. Uh so that one's kind of in question as well so all right that's about it for this week i hope you enjoyed the uh the video if you did you know if you're still listening i appreciate it you're gonna get more youtube stuff leave a like subscribe to the channel leave your pics all that youtube mumbo jumbo um yeah so that's it week six down uh, all good so hopefully you enjoyed the video thank you so much for listening thank you for subscribing thank you all for uh, all the comments you've left uh, uh as well on all the videos those are very nice i enjoy them and uh yeah that's about it have a good rest of your day night morning mid-afternoon afternoon afternoon, mid-evening uh random uh 4 a.m 5 a.m viewers um people who watch at at like 18 o'clock or whatever that time is in military zones uh or in europe uh yeah thanks for listening whenever you do have a great rest of your uh whatever time it is go lions go tigers and of course it's always go patriots and uh i'll see you later Bye bye